It's no surprise that we can't fully explain this topic, and that you don't see much spiritual growth because it's a mystery to our understanding and something we rarely practice. There's so little of the spirit in both teachers and learners that we speak about it as if it's something unfamiliar, and we struggle to help you truly grasp what it means in a real, living way. All we can say in general is that walking by the Spirit is a divine thing, something beyond our usual way of living, even beyond our religious lives. Since few people experience it, we know little about it, but we should understand this. It's beyond what we've achieved so far. It's something higher than where we are, yet it's something we're called to reach for. This truth should ignite a holy ambition in us to strive for more, knowing that it is possible. Christ calls us to walk with him in this way. I want Christians to have big dreams and goals, to be people with high and limitless desires, never content with where they are spiritually. We should always want more of God, more obedience to his will, more walking by the Spirit, and more separation from the world's ways. That's what it means to have a divine spirit. The divine nature is out of place here on earth, and you can recognize it by its constant upward movement, with never resting, always striving towards God, His holiness, and His Spirit. I'd like to speak on three points. First, what it means to walk by the Spirit. Second, how this connects to the blessed state of being free from condemnation. And finally, how this way of life comes from being united with Christ Jesus. Spiritual walking means living according to a spiritual guide, following spiritual principles and aiming for spiritual goals. When these three are in place, a Christian's life moves within them. It's guided by God's word as the standard, powered by faith and love in Jesus, and driven by the spirit of Jesus in our hearts. This walk starts with the spirit and ends with the glory of Jesus and God. This isn't a lawless or chaotic way of living. It follows the perfect rule of God, aiming for spiritual growth, not just being content with what we've already achieved. The world's way is different. It's led by a different spirit, the spirit of disobedience, which leads many down a broad and easy path. But Christians are called to be different, not just in opinion, but in how they live, seeking holiness and walking apart from the world's ways. This kind of divine difference is acceptable and even necessary. We should aim to be as different as possible from the world, striving to align ourselves more with God's word, which is the perfect guide. Paul recognized that the law is spiritual and holy, but we are often still worldly. As we grow spiritually, we should keep moving forward, never being satisfied with where we are or comparing ourselves to others. Comparing ourselves to others can hold us back from the constant forward motion we're called to. As Christians, we should value and honor God's word, knowing that it is a precious and perfect guide. Many people undervalue the word, but without it, there's only darkness. True freedom in the spirit doesn't mean living without rules. It means being free from sin, not free to sin. The spirit sets us free to walk in God's ways, not aimlessly, but within the path of his commandments. We must understand that God's word should guide every part of our lives, both religious and everyday actions. Spiritual walking isn't limited to church or religious activities. It's continuous. Our daily lives, like eating, drinking, and working, should be done in a way that leads us closer to God. Everything we do should reflect our Christian faith, not just our religious practices. Some people think the Bible doesn't apply to their daily lives or business dealings, but that's not true. If we separate our actions from the Word, we risk separating our faith from those actions too. We must let the Word guide all areas of our lives so that we live not only as people, but as Christians in everything we do. This spiritual journey is based on spiritual principles. We know that the Spirit of Jesus Christ is the one who gives us life and guides us spiritually. Without Him, we can do nothing. As Christians, we should rely on Him fully, acting as if we are merely tools in His hands. While we should put in effort and do our best as if we are working independently, we must remember that we are truly dependent on the Spirit. Paul said it best, I worked harder than anyone, but it was not me, it was the grace of God in me. I live, but it's not me, it's Christ living in me. It's hard to balance these two ideas in our daily lives, but they must go together. One of the greatest mysteries of Christianity is finding our strength and energy in someone else, Christ. 
we need to realize that on our own, we are powerless. No matter how experienced or gifted we are, we must view ourselves as incapable of doing anything without God. The growing Christian should no longer trust in their own abilities, but should see themselves as dependent on the Spirit, unable to accomplish anything without Him. Unfortunately, we often approach spiritual duties relying on our qualifications or past experiences. We become confident in our abilities instead of recognizing our need for grace. Instead of focusing on our talents or gifts, we should keep our eyes on the grace of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. Even when things seem easier because of practice and experience, we should still cry out to God, Lead me, and I will follow you. Don't measure your calling based on your own strength, but on the one who strengthens you. The Holy Spirit moves us through faith in Christ and love for Him as our Savior. These two principles, faith and love, are what drive us to obey God. If fear drives us, without being mixed with faith and love, it becomes a form of bondage. But as Christians, we should walk in the spirit of adoption, calling God Father, not driven by fear. Sadly, many Christians are pushed to obey God more out of fear than out of love. True Christian living should be motivated by love for Christ, which makes obedience natural and joyful, rather than forced by fear. Many people's actions in religion are motivated by external factors, custom, expectations, or fear of punishment. But true Christianity comes from within, powered by love for Christ. It's easy to act like we're religious when we're surrounded by certain people, but God sees the heart. We must be careful not to treat religion as a routine or something we do just because we're used to it. As Christians, we are called to live for God, not for ourselves. Our goal should not just be to get to heaven, but to live a life that reflects God's love and glory. Our good deeds can never earn God's favor. Even when we do everything we're called to do, we must still recognize that we are unworthy servants depending on God's grace. Our efforts should not be about earning salvation, but showing our gratitude and love for Christ, who has already saved us. This is the true heart of Christian living, doing everything for the glory of God, motivated by love for Him. First, we need to recognize that spiritual growth comes from within, not just from outward actions. Our bodies alone cannot fully live a life guided by the Spirit. External religious practices are like the outer shell that holds something much deeper, the true inner connection with God. All the things people can see, our religious actions, are like statues or paintings without life, unless the Holy Spirit and our own spirit give them meaning and energy. I'm not saying it's just the Holy Spirit at work. Our own souls and spirits are involved too. The Spirit of God works in us by influencing our soul, the part of us that is eternal. The Bible says, There is a spirit in man, and the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. So, while outward actions in worship are important because God commands them, they are empty without the soul's involvement. People who reject these outward practices are missing something important. We are made of both a spirit and a body, and both should be engaged in worship. A true Christian doesn't exclude either inner communion with God or outward obedience to God's commands. But, sadly, many of us worship God with our bodies while our hearts remain distant. This is what kills our worship. It's like the soul is missing. We may look like saints on the outside, but there is very little true love for God inside. This generation often falls into the trap of focusing on outward religious practices while neglecting the deeper spiritual life. What remains is a shell of Christianity without its real power and life. So I urge you to focus on walking in the Spirit. Only your spirit can truly follow the Holy Spirit. Our bodies are limited, and the spiritual path is upward and requires more than just physical effort. Instead of measuring your faith by outward appearances, look within. Engage your soul in your walk with God. When your spirit is aligned with the Holy Spirit, your actions and religious practices will naturally follow in a meaningful way.